wrapping up a lengthy standoff in Philadelphia ended late last night after the suspect surrendered to police. Baptist Health Corbin and the MCOR Foundation have partnered to give students heart screenings. Plus, while many schools across the region are entering a new year, one former school in Pike County is about to be in the history books. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, it is 634 on Thursday, August the 15th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. Some are waking up to fog, but for the new, the good news is none are waking up to rain. Some might have seen it overnight, but right now, nada. Let's bring in Brandon this morning, give us a better breakdown of what to expect on this Friday Eve. Brandon. Good morning. Good morning. That one little lone shower dying out over Southern Perry County this morning. If, if it hasn't completely died out, it's not enough for us to scan it, but we see the fog is enough to see that this morning. We're seeing it across the area, so be careful. Give yourself plenty of time to get back and forth. Temperatures in the mid to upper 60s, close to 70 in some locations. And we'll take a look at the app cast. You can download that for free in all the app stores. You see a few clouds this morning, and then we'll see those clouds give way to sunshine by the afternoon. Hot and humid, that's straight chance for a shower. Cannot be ruled out all throughout the first part of the day. Full forecast on the way here in just a few minutes. Will? All righty, Brandon. Thank you, sir. Well, a lengthy standoff in Philadelphia ended late last night after the suspect surrendered to police. Six police officers were shot. All have been released from the hospital. CBS's Tom Hansen is at the scene with details. The man who police say shot six officers during a lengthy standoff surrendered around midnight. Stand by. We have the mail. Out of the house. For more than seven hours, the suspect was holed up in a North Philadelphia building. Listen to me well. We got shot. Around 4.30 in the afternoon, police went to the home to serve a drug warrant. Officials say the operation went awry almost immediately. The shooter fired multiple rounds. Officers returned fire, many of whom who had to escape through windows and doors to get uh, from a barrage of bullets. Two officers and three other people were trapped inside until a SWAT team could free them. It's nothing short of a miracle that we don't have multiple officers killed today. Police say the shooter barricaded himself inside and was firing multiple rounds out his window. Yeah. Right now. A little angry uh, about have someone having all that weaponry and, and all that all that firepower. These women and young girls were in their second floor apartment when the shooting started. I thank God for these cops. They good people. Don't say nothing bad about them. They kept us safe the whole time. All six officers who were shot were released from the hospital. Two walked out as their colleagues saluted. Tom Hansen, CBS News, Philadelphia. Now, another police officer was injured in a car crash related to the standoff and was taken to the hospital. An attorney says his former client, 36 year old Maurice Hill, is the suspect. He was not injured during the standoff. An officer involved shooting in Louisville leaves one person dead. It happened Tuesday night in the city's east end. Officials say they were called out for a domestic violence situation. When they got there, the suspect pointed a gun at officers. Police shot the man, killing him. No officers were injured. Two people went to the hospital after being hurt in the domestic violence incident. Well, University of Louisville trustees approved the school's purchase of a financially struggling hospital under a plan that would include a $50 million state loan. The deal will significantly increase the university's footprint in the medical sector of Kentucky's largest city. Under the deal, U of L would purchase the Greater Louisville Market Assets of Kentucky One Health Incorporated, which includes Jewish Hospital. Half of the $50 million loan would be forgivable if job retention and other conditions are met. Baptist Health Corbin and the MCOR Foundation have partnered to give students heart screenings. Student athletes have the opportunity to get heart echo and EKGs through Baptist Health for free. Physicians say the screenings can save lives as one in 100 kids are unaware they have a heart condition. The number one killer of student athletes each year is sudden cardiac arrest. And what sudden car cardiac arrest is, is when that heart just stops. The next screening and information day for Corbin students will be September 13th.
Well, while many schools across the region are entering a new school year, one former school in Pike County is about to be in the history books. The Camp Creek Schoolhouse began serving students in the stopover community in the late 1890s. It served as a church and school for 70 years before it was turned into a home more than 40 years ago. Now the building's use has come to an end. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more. An old building. Oh, when they built it, you know, they built it good. Once full of life and youth. This is the last old original one room schoolhouse that's still standing in Pike County, to my knowledge. But that former schoolhouse, which has been nestled in the Camp Creek community for more than 120 years, will not be standing much longer. I had every intention when I first started tearing into it to try to save it, but Unfortunately, it's just too far gone now. Josh Mayhorn's grandparents went to school there, and after the school shut down in the late 1960s, they eventually lived there. It's sad in a way because, you know, I know the historical value of it and uh, all the memories that I've had growing up here. But Mayhorn is not the only person with memories. Uh, I got my hind end busted all the time. Clell Blinkenship was a student at the one-room school until it closed. She rung that bell right there at the door. We had to line up the girls on one side, boys on the other side. Blinkenship says the discipline is not the only thing he remembers. Generations of family memories are also contained in the once sturdy walls. It's a, uh, it'd be sad to look over here and hitting out there, but he's going to build back. If I live, I'll help him. Mayhorn is now the owner of the property and is planning to build his home there. And he wants to build something that looks similar to the old school. I know it won't be the original, but when people come, they'll look at it and it'll remind them of what used to be here. He says it is a way to honor the history of his family and community. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WIMT Mountain News. Now, Mayhorn says the building will be open for a few more weeks to anyone who wants to contact him about taking photos or to just stop by to share their memories. After that, he expects to begin demolition. Well, while school is in full swing in many school districts, several of them still struggle to fill vacant positions. We wondered how much teachers earn. Through state statistics, we learned the average classroom teacher's salary is $53,923 a year. The affluent Louisville area of Anchorage has its own school district. Its teachers average the most at more than $67,000. The lowest paying district is right here in eastern Kentucky, Pineville, where a teacher averages $43,407. Well, it was the first day of school up in Lexington yesterday, but a sign at one elementary school is catching a lot of attention. A parent took a photo of one of the In God We Trust signs. It was in the form of a dollar bill. The mother took this photo at Athens Chillisburg Elementary School. This comes after a, a bill passed through the Kentucky General Assembly required schools to display In God We Trust prominently. Yesterday, Democratic gubernatorial nominee Andy Bashir released a plan aimed at producing more Kentucky jobs tied to farm technology and advanced manufacturing. Bashir calls it his kitchen table agenda. The plan includes starting business, ex business accelerators and expanding access to credit to recruit agritech and advanced manufacturing operations to Kentucky. The current attorney general is challenging Governor Bevin in November. Meanwhile, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is denying any advanced knowledge of a deal with Russia that benefited Kentucky. The Washington Post reports that earlier this year, Senator McConnell pushed for lifting sanctions from companies partially owned by Oleg Durapaska, who was tied to Russian President Vladimir Putin. U.S. sanctions at the time forbid anyone to do business with the Russians in response to meddling in U.S. elections. McConnell says he had no idea the Russians were involved in the Kentucky deal and that the White House wanted the sanctions lifted. That was how I voted. The reason I voted the way I did. The now, the founder of the U.S. company behind the deal, Brady Industries, says he did not tell any U.S. officials that lifting the sanctions would help the agreement go through. But congressional Democrats are suspicious and they want the government to review the deal.
Foggy forecast again this morning and it's getting worse. It's ebbing and flowing. You see zero visibility in Logan and then less than one mile there. Jackson Hazard Pikeville, zero visibility Williamsburg, zero visibility Jonesville and less than a mile there at Harlan and Middlesbrough. So just be careful that five mile threshold down everywhere today. So we're seeing less than that across the region. Temperatures in the 60s and one low 70 now. Prestonsburg and Ashland drop down into the 60s again. 72 there in Jacksboro. Your out the door forecast features uh, climbing temperatures quickly today into the mid to upper 80s and sun and clouds later on. A straight chance for a shower can't be ruled out either. Will? All righty, Brandon. Thank you. Well, we will have stories that are trending on WYMT.com next. As always, thank you for joining us right here on Mountain News this morning.